Pinus radiata is the main tree we use here in New Zealand as a sustainable timber to build with. It is suited to our environment, it grows reasonably quick and does what it needs to do. But one of the problems is if you chop a piece of pine down, leave it on the ground, it'll start rotting almost immediately. Back in the day we used to build with a lot of native timbers like Rimu or also another alternative from overseas is cedar and these are a great example that is naturally water resistant and doesn't need any additional treatment. If you're going to use pine in building you're going to have to pump it full of chemicals so that it doesn't rot and so that it doesn't get eaten up by insects and so that it stands the test of time. So what happens is you get your piece of pine and it gets chopped at the mill and shaped and then it goes into a special room and they basically just pump it full of chemicals. There's six categories, but the best way to look at it is there's really two categories, inside timber and outside timber. Inside timber is broken into untreated H1.1 and H1.2. Now, the H1.2 is the main one that we use for framing, and you can tell that because it's pink. Now, the pink additive means it's been treated with boron, so believe it or not, insects love to eat timber, you know, your house can get eaten from the inside out. And before you know it, all their structural integrity has been eaten away by these tiny little insects. So that's why they pump it full of that. They also prevent it from fungal decay. Basically, that's where there's a chance of like moisture getting in there. And then basically it's a breeding ground for stuff to grow and just slowly, again, deteriorate the strength of your timber. So H1.1 is the same. It's not pink though. It doesn't have boron added to it. So. H1.1, protected against insects. H1.2, protected against insects and fungal decay. Now you're probably wondering what's H2. Well, we don't really care about that here in New Zealand. That's for our friends over the ditch in Aussie. It just covers termites. And so we don't really have a termite problem here in New Zealand. Tick, no termites, no, no snakes. She'll be right, mate. So H2 is very similar to H1. It, it can be blue timber as well. Smash the like button, click subscribe. So out of the six categories, seven if we include untreated, four of them are external. So we've got H3, we've got H4, we've got H5, and we've got H6. But really in building, we use H3.2, we use H4, and we use H5. And H6 is used for things like wharfs and where it's like permanently in the water. H6 is basically marine grade. So for a home builder like myself or a DIY like you, not really concerned. Now let's work backwards. H5, that's for stuff that's permanently in the ground. On the job where we drove piles into the ground, they will have an H5 treatment in them. So that's still pine, a pinus radiata tree. And you know, it's, it's a 150 or a 200 mil ECD post. And then, and then it's pumped full of chemicals before it's driven into the ground. The idea is that it will last hundred years. Then we have H4. So you've seen us building like fences and retaining walls. H4 is anything that's permanently in touch with the ground where it's got the ability to drain as well. So like in a retaining wall, we're allowed to use H4 boards. So a lot of our landscaping timbers will be H4 as well. H3.2, we would use that generally like say when we're building a deck or 
any external framing that's going to get exposed to the elements. Sometimes you get the option to make your bottom plate H3.2. Personally, I've never done this. H3.2 is all about outside structural timber. H3.1 is like fascia board and weatherboard. The difference between H3.1 and 3.2 is 3.1 is generally non-structural applications such as like weatherboard and fascia and H3.2 is structural applications such as deck framing or like load bearing or bearers under your house. You, so you do your pile which is generally H5 and then you do your bearers which is usually H3.2 and then you do your floor joist. This is a great example. Your floor joist can actually be H1.2. Bearing in mind all of that depends on how close you are to the ground. One of the biggest problems with treated timber is that because of the chemicals we pump into it, especially like the H3, H4, H5 stuff, you're pumping chemicals into it so it doesn't rot and it doesn't break down. But then what do we do with our offcuts? We can't do anything with it. Also, handling it, cutting it, I think some work needs to be done in the industry to work out what to do with all these treated timber offcuts. Because really, once we get to the pointy end of the build, there's not much else we can do with it. You can't, you can't burn it. Yeah, it's not very safe. If you're building garden planter boxes, you need to be careful to line the edge of your box so that the treatment doesn't leach into the dirt and into the food you're growing. So good and bad implications of timber treatment. At the end of the day, I'm a fan of working with timber. So you got to take the good with the bad. But I would like to see some change in that area. You know, I'd love to see us develop, say, like a kiln where we can burn the stuff safely and turn that into like renewable power or something like that.